morning, Living Waters. Welcome to our time of coffee together. I'm Pastor Zach. Thanks for being with us today. So, uh, normally, we will reflect on a, a sermon that, uh, um, throughout the week, we'll reflect on the, the sermon text and how we're living that out, right? As our kind of a daily devotional using scripture. We're going to do it a little different this week. Um, the sermon this past Sunday, if you haven't listened to it, please do. Um, it's not perfect. No sermon ever is. Um, and if there is things about that sermon that you don't agree with, you're uncomfortable with, please talk to me. I don't know everything, but I try my best to be faithful. And uh, I, I think that the what we're seeing in this country that's been building for so long is a crisis that we can no longer ignore as the church. And so this week, we're looking on what we can do. We're going to go into the end of the sermon with the five baptismal promises, the five things that we all promised. Maybe we were babies, so it was promised on our behalf. But we affirm them in our affirmation of baptism, confirmation. Um, and, and anytime we have a, a, a baptism or confirmation, we are reaffirming them again, right? So remember our own baptism. There's five promises. And guess what? There's five days of the, the work week. So guess what? We got one a day. I thought it might be helpful. I know some of you are very um, action-oriented. Let's hit the ground running. And uh, I, again, you heard my sermon on Sunday. I'm calling for a bias of action. Don't get me wrong. But uh, there is going to be no quick fix. It's going to require doing things differently than we have before. Reaching out to different kinds of folks, except for the folks that we perhaps have avoided. No matter our disposition, whatever way that may be. It's going to require hard work. The greatest crises are never solved easily. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at our five baptismal promises. I'm going to kind of create a foundation for each one. What I'm inviting you to do, this is going to be <clears throat> fine tailored to your life. Right? This is going to be tailored to um, what you have going on. I can make a list, but that's my list, right? Uh, so I'm going to lay down kind of a, a foundation for each promise, and I'm inviting you to take it to the next level. For you to find action items, what God is calling you to do. To live out your baptism, to help make our nation a better place. The church is called to be leaders in justice, peace, and love. So, we begin with to live among God's faithful people. I was getting a little ahead of myself earlier. To live among God's faithful people. I think it's interesting that alone is this promise, right? Because perhaps there are some among God's faithful people we'd rather not live amongst. Maybe it's people with different views than us. Maybe it's people that are from the other side of the tracks. Maybe it's the people that we see coming, we lock our, our doors and windows in our cars we're driving. Perhaps it's people, even in our own congregation, that we just never really saw eye to eye with. But you see, these interactions are small microcosms of the macro issues that are gripping the soul of our nation right now. How we choose to live our life, our values, who we vote for are then reflected and are played out on the national stage. Right? So when we choose not to live among God's faithful people, we choose to isolate, choose our own tribe, if you will. The people that, that we approve of, that we agree with, that we get along with. We're teaching our nation to act the same way. And further and further, we become divided. Because we never interact with each other anymore. You see, I have served in suburban rural, Appalachian, um, smaller urban, uh, different settings, okay? Different regions of the country. New England, the South, the, the uh, I guess the Appalachian again, the, the Midwest. Different types of Midwest, too. And it's funny, when people begin to experience other people, how quickly we realize... We have a lot in common. And maybe we're not as bad as we were made out to be. Maybe, just maybe, 
through enough living together, sharing our values, engaging conversation, you know, they may be difficult. We might find common ground for action. We may be able to begin to build trust again. Studies have shown that countries that have the highest levels of trust correlate with the highest levels of happiness. Guess where America ranks on that right now? Pretty low! So, it's up to you. How will you live among God's faithful people in 2021? Promise number two coming tomorrow. <laughs>